Hello everyone and today is our sixth episode and we have something very special for you and we are gonna rock it and that's why we have this 1980s kind of look-alike uh, girl from the, uh, the one of the best eras in music and in life in itself we had so much fun and we I have some of my lights in the back so we can have that vibe going on because today uh, we have a special speaker um, and his name is Jason Stallman Jason Stallman is is a stop-motion animator he worked in the fantastic Mr. Fox in the morning kitchen sequence uh, in the where, the where he's eating the toast um, and, and you you have to you have to understand that everybody loves that sequence um, in the Isle of Dogs also he worked um, with Wes Anderson um, on the scenes with Chief the dog and not make characters um and when they are together those two characters uh it, laika um he worked in kubo uh he did the kubo the open sequence with his mother at the beginning of the film and in in the cave uh in paranorman which by laika too uh he worked in a in with in the scene with corny and mitch at neil's house in box throws is the I will say that's the because if you see his trajectory, he, this is one of the latest films, so now he's more seasoned. If you can tell, he's seasoned since the beginning, but he worked in the box trolls as Madame Fru Fru. That character is just like he, she, she dances and now I have this lively um, demeanor. And yeah, you have to see that film. He worked with Tim Burton animating some of the. Uh, I think the course bright. I think he animated the course bright too. So, yes, it is interesting the conversation that we're going to have today, and I can't wait to start it. So let's keep it up and let's go. Welcome to my show, Jason. Hi, Alba. Um, this series of heart-to-heart -heart conversations are very dear to me because, again, it brings me together with uh, other artists that struggle uh, like me and get inspired like me. And um, well, we have influences, right? This is like how we are shaped as artists and I I am a big fan of your work um, I mean it is interesting to see how you give life to many characters they're all different from different backgrounds from diff and then you have to um, you have to um, animate in different movies totally uh, you know, you have to come up with so much uh, research and development for every character you do. And then you work with amazing um, directors as well that, you know, you, you have to understand. You have to understand the screenplay. You have to understand the, the director's vision. And then you have to, to come up with a, a strategy on how this character will move. And I, I am wondering, like everybody here in the show are wondering about your artistry is, what are your influences? Influences for me, they come from all directions. It's a feeling in your gut that makes you go, oh yes, that. Um, so art, art influences me from all directions. Music, acting, dance, sculpture painting and uh, as a stop motion animator I find myself reacting to all of these expressions and they all feed into my work. It feels very personal, uh, it is very personal uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's very private actually. Your influences don't have to be understood and they certainly don't need to be explained. 
um, and you don't need someone else's approval. If that music moves you, you go listen to that song. Um, you're listening to yourself if you do that. Uh, so I encourage anyone to not pigeonhole themselves, expose yourself to as much art as possible, uh, watch non-mainstream non cinema, uh, go to art galleries, uh, watch and listen to live music and dance a lot. So just, uh, yeah, like I say, you know, don't, don't listen to anybody else. Don't listen to the cool kids. Um, and allow all of this stuff that you're finding kind of coming in and out of your life to just wash over you. And uh, it, it should be fun, it should be pleasure, and you don't need to justify that, okay? Now, I have to agree with all that you said, because one of the things as a, as a director and animator is like, I have to enjoy life to the fullest the same way. I, I have been in caves underground, 3,000 feet down, uh, with hundreds, if not thousands of bats all around me and probably in pitch black and uh, expeditions in caves with snakes in there. And like, I'm the kind of person, yeah, I'm an adventurer. And I understand that drive and that adrenaline as an artist, you need that. And and I love to, I'm, I'm, I is, I'm a soprano, so I love to sing opera at home, like the, the Phantom of the Opera songs. Uh, I'm I'm right there with you. I just um, I I like to dance. I became a, a Zumba instructor. <laughs> I know um, because I like to inspire people in wellness too. You know, it's like I like to I feel good about myself. I want you to feel good about yourself. But then you, as an animator, are using these tools to for self care for happiness, but also as a, as a work, uh, as, as a job that you have to do. But at the same time, that job, it, it will lead you to a legacy that you're gonna bring to the animating community forever. Everybody's gonna think of well, who did that? Who was the animator who animated that sequence so incredibly well and, and they put so much uh, purpose to that character? And um, I admire uh, that about you and your work. And um, it just gets me thinking, um, what is your biggest struggle as an artist uh, in your craft? My biggest struggle is with mental health. Uh, most artists, I think, are, are divergent thinkers. And we're often made to feel like we're a little bit broken in our Western cultures and societies. Um, we feel our feelings really deeply. Emotions can be super overwhelming and we don't always feel like we fit in somehow. Um, so my biggest struggle with my art is with vulnerability. Um, plays into what I was saying about accomplishments too. You've got to be vulnerable. Um, you have to be vulnerable. All your performance choices feel like an exposure of some part of yourself. And in stop motion, especially, they're like really scrutinized. So every choice you've made, every gesture you've made, uh, an eye dart, anything is super analyzed. And that is exhausting. It's it's really depleting, uh, but it's part of the gig and it's part of the fun. And just try and remember in those moments when you are tired and overwhelmed that that's okay. It's part of it. And it's, 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 it's not a price you pay. It's part of the journey of being vulnerable and being an artist. You, you get to have that vulnerability hangover. Um, so, you know, like make it part of your work, uh, make friends with it um, and give it a little cuddle now and again. And just remember to have fun. Just remember that it doesn't really matter if it's not correct, but you've tried your best and you've stayed open-minded. Um, and uh, yeah, just a little self-care around those kinds of things. I totally agree with that about um, uh, being an artist I have a mental the mental health part of it um, <clears throat> recently I've been teaching um, young uh, artists and I see the struggle with mental health especially after the pandemic and yes being vulnerable is important um, to create um, for example, one of my films, Time Space Reflections, 
was about grief because I, I, I was grieving the death of one of my art students. And yes, I took, I made a story, I made a storyboard and I went on with it um, and it made it my grief. And it, it, you have to be vulnerable. I, I cry, but at the end, at the end um, I felt that it was necessary for me to release my student to the heavens, right? Uh, so she, she find um, the universe, the new home that she had. So yes, uh, being vulnerable is so, it's a beautiful thing, and understanding uh, how to get vulnerable with who is important too. And when you put your vulnerability in art. Um, it has much meaning. Hey, you're not alone <laughs> feeling like that. Um, I will say I'm 55 this year. Uh, I've done this my whole life, been very lucky. But my anxiety around exposing myself and being vulnerable in my art has never improved. It's never really gotten away. I've just learned to embrace that part of the process. And uh, the more uh, open I am about it, it allows other people to feel like that's okay. And I see that art flourish when we allow these energies to kind of flow a little more. So, um, yeah, don't feel broken. You're not. So thinking about that and going forward um, as an artist, I also am curious about your biggest accomplishments as an artist. And what can you tell us about that? My biggest accomplishments? Accomplishments. Well, um, I think for me, uh, working in stop motion movies, it's when I've listened to a brief, uh, taken some direction, um, and I've looked at a sequence I'm about to animate, and I've, I've really listened, and I've really understood it, and I've put my ego to one side. That's when I lean into it and I embrace it. And usually that's when my influences come back in um, and they kick in and, and that's inspiration. I'll listen to that feeling in my gut, uh, my instinct that tells me, oh yeah, that thing there. Um, I'll remember a music video, a song, a performance from a film, um, and then I'll just get super hyper-focused on that. Uh, it's a very private moment. You don't need to share that with anybody. That's a you thing. You don't even need to share it with the director. If you're getting your inspiration coming through from something else, just 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 lean into that in your way. Um, and don't try and justify it to yourself or share it often. I don't often share those things. Um, and yeah, so I'll let all this play out inside me and I remember always to have fun. That's really important. Uh, personally, I'm attracted to uh, the drama because it's a little ridiculous and my imagination is really attracted to uh, the ridiculous and the absurd and I have a lot of fun with that. Even if it feels like a really serious moment in the film, there is a big element of fun to be had with being so serious and dramatic. I, I love that. I don't know why. Um, and if a performance I've come up with works, then this is a big accomplishment. It doesn't always work, but you must allow yourself to try. There's a dance between hitting the brief and being wild and trusting your gut. That's, that's the dance. It's not a right and wrong thing. It's like finding your way, but um, it's like staying available to both what the sequence needs, what the director's vision is, uh, bringing yourself and bringing your inspirations in and it's a little weaving of those things. It's very textural and it's fun and often you will surprise yourself and that's like a trustful moment and uh, trust me, <laughs> I've done this for years now, uh, it's okay to not know what you're doing. It's really okay to not know. You'll know when you know, uh, but you got to try first and then you'll know what you, it doesn't work. Um, and it's, that's okay. That's not unprofessional. That's have fun, cut loose a little bit and start to learn to trust yourself to sort of free fall. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's hard sometimes. But uh, yeah, biggest accomplishments are when I've allowed that to kind of organically flow and then I surprise myself and I look at the choices I made after or as I'm going through it and think oh my god yeah this just really works and then it gets exciting. Bye -bye.
that is incredible. Thank you so much for, for, for pinpointing that particular aspect. Um, I think our young and not so young audience would like to know what advice you, as a professional in the industry, as a master craftsman animator, what advice do you have for, for us? Advice for young artists. Well, fall in love every single day with your work. You will lose sight sometimes of the thing that initially moved you to be creative. So check in on that. Remember there's an aspect of what you're being asked to do if you're working in collaboration with others that you can always fall in love with. You can always find something. Someone else's vision even, you, you can find something in there that you go, yeah, that, that thing. You can, you can latch onto that, lean into it and fall in love with that aspect of it. It can be an eye dart in animation for me. It's like an eye dart or a gesture or a feeling or the timing of something that I can play with within the performance, even though I'm listening to the brief and answering it. There's a nuance there that I've really understood and got into. So remember, even when it's hard and you're tired and you're trying to pay your bills and you think I can't do this anymore, Remember, check in on yourself, fall back in love with your work, fall back in love with your art. Um, lean on that. And uh, I always say to myself, okay, I'm going to work with someone else. It's a collaboration. I say, ego to one side, make it really generous. Make it generous for yourself. Have fun. Be of service to the vision of the director. There's, like I say, there's always some element of you that you're going to need to put in there. Your sensitivity and artist is needed in those moments. So... Give yourself over to that and have fun. Thank you, Jason. I really, really appreciate you taking the time. Um, it's an honor to have you here um, uh, in this show, but thank you so much for being part of this uh, series. And um, for everybody here listening, I you can share this as much as you can. Um, and you just continue the support uh, for this um, artist here. Uh, I'm truly yours, Alva Garcia, and um, hopefully one day, all these artists that I'm showing you here, uh, hopefully one day we'll work together in creating magic, some kind of film, maybe a feature film. It's always good to dream, and an artist dreams all the time. So thank you and bye-bye.